And I'm just wondering when you were in that role, uh, did tariffs ever come out of the toolbox? I don't remember it, but they seem to be part of the furniture now, don't they? Well, they, they were actually used once or twice uh, in a tire case against China very early in the Obama administration, but it was very narrowly focused on a particular industry that had been behaving badly uh, and where we felt that was the only uh, resort that we had. But I think you're right. We're now living in a world where tariffs are uh, almost an essential part of the toolkit uh, right now. And uh, I think if you're a business or you're an investor, you have to start planning on that uncertainty. One of the broader things that we discuss here is that is this really just about trade? Is it also about other things, Belt and Road, uh, dominance of the Internet of Things, the South China Sea, influence in the Pacific? Is, is trade really just a, a metaphor for some uh, a broader geopolitical struggle between the U.S. and China? I think China and the U.S., of course, are, you know, talking to one another on a broad range of issues across the board, uh, the whole, including the list that you just mentioned. But I think the trade issues have always been at the center of the um, some of the concerns that have divided us. And, you know, the things that President Trump is pushing for, whether it's more better protection of inter intellectual property, uh, forced technology transfers, subsidies within the Chinese economy for some of their key industries. These are all things that Presidents Obama and Bush and even Clinton have been talking about. His, uh, his tactics, of course, are much different. Uh, and I think the open question is whether they deliver um, results in the short term or what they do to infect some of these other issues that you've been talking about, um, because he really is taking a uh, 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 everything all, all in approach, putting all of these things on the table at once, including Huawei and, and some of the other issues you mentioned. Christopher, let me take you through some of the forecasts that we're seeing from Citigroup. This GTV chart on the Bloomberg showing that their calculation, if you have 25% tariffs on the remaining Chinese goods, plus tariffs on car imports, and if the Federal Reserve doesn't cut interest rates, we could see the S&P 500 on the top panel go into a bear market around the 2350 level. Gold prices just rise to 1600 an ounce, and then you can see the 10-year yield at the bottom uh, fall to 1.5% and even lower. What's your base case scenario, and where do you put the markets? Well, I think if all of those things happen, uh, you know, the, clearly it's going to be bad for, for markets. I think markets right now are trying to, to assess two or th at least two moving parts. One is on the trade front, and we've seen this escalation of rhetoric on both sides. I think anybody who's negotiated a job, negotiated buying a new home, understands that as you get closer to a deal, the theatrics and the antics and the emotional uh, engagement becomes much more, um, uh, much more central and much harder to understand exactly where we stand in the negotiations. I still think the base case is that we will be headed towards a deal, but it's sort of a short-term truce, even as we work out some of these longer-term issues with China over a much longer period of time. At the same time, markets are clearly trying to assess whether the Fed is going to respond to some of this, um, uh, these dynamics in the bond markets, some of the more mixed economic data in the United States. And I think both of those things are causing the near-term gyrations that we've seen.